Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a quick look at one of DaVinci Resolve's fusion titles, The Digital Glitch. Let's go. Okay, so up until very recently, if you wanted to achieve this effect in DaVinci Resolve, you would have had to have created it yourself in the Fusion editor, uh, or you would have had to have found a preset online from somebody else and hope that it basically fits exactly what you're after. Now, DaVinci Resolve, I'm currently using the beta 17 version six, 17 beta version six, I should say. And in here, we actually have a whole bunch of new Fusion titles. So if you haven't already downloaded the beta version of DaVinci Resolve Studio, and I would suggest you do so. And the digital glitch effect is probably one of my favorites because it's something that I created in an older version of DaVinci Resolve. So when I saw that this was in the new version, I was actually pretty excited to see how it works. And actually it pretty much does exactly what I manually created just without all of the effort. So let's jump in, let's have a look at it. Okay, so here we have a little uh, bit of B-roll just of my keyboard. And as you can see, I've already taken the liberty of adding the digital glitch effect, changing the text and the font, adding it over and just making it fit. So this is what it looks like. Pretty simple, really. If you dive into it, it's actually not. So I'll show you quickly. So if you click on digital glitch here in your timeline, you will see that you actually get the option to change the large and small text. It does come with two text options in there. And then you can change this how you'd normally change any kind of title in DaVinci Resolve. So for instance, if you wanted to change the font like I have, like I've gone for good old Bebas and uh, Shelby, as the uh, as the smaller text and, and that's kind of where we're at here and I think that looks quite nice. Now you can change the color, you can, like I say, change all of the text properties. You can change the usual video properties as it was previously known uh, for text objects in the settings tab. But where it kind of gets really interesting is if you want to, you can customize the way this all works inside Fusion. Now in order to do this, under Digital Glitch, just click this tiny little Fusion icon here, which will open your project in the Fusion window, as you can see. Now, it might not look like much, and it might not look much different. That's because you have to double click Digital Glitch to expand it out. Go. So now you can see like a few other things. I wouldn't worry about this too much, unless you're really looking to dive into it. The two main things that you're looking for are these two blurs. These masks up here, there's about 50 of them in there. It made me cry a little when I first opened it, because it's a bit scary. but we can just ignore that. All that does is create that like patchy texture in there. It's all keyframed and automated and everything. So don't worry about that too much, but your prism blur and everything. Now these are all keyframed. So as you can see, like it jumps between different, uh, different properties here. But I mean, to be honest, you can customize these as much as you want. So your prism blur, that is what creates the, uh, the kind of the, the color shift, the prism color separation of the text. Now you can change that by the blur strength and the aberration distance and strength, which will change the amount of effect there. That is how you change that. And then your mosaic blur, again, this is keyframed. So this will change your pixel frequency, your smooth strength, etc. So as you can see here, when it gets to this point here, that is where you start to get that pixelated texture. And that is what the mosaic blur does. I mean, like I say, it's pretty straightforward. There's not really much more to it than that. That is how you would customize each individual element. In terms of the actual effect on a basic level, you change your text here, small text here, change your font, whatever. You can stretch it and the keyframes will translate. They will stretch, they will time stretch. They won't just like cut off. If I wanted to kind of shorten this, I could, and it would still fade in and fade out in the right time. And that is pretty much it for the DaVinci Resolve digital glitch effect. I mean, you can see for yourself exactly how simple yet effective that is. Like it's not obnoxious, it's not right in your face. It's just a nice, like simple digital glitch effect that essentially does what you need it to and nothing more. Okay, so that does do it for this tiny tutorial. There are plenty more things to explore within the newest version of DaVinci Resolve, and I'll be covering most of them on this channel in future videos. 
So don't forget to subscribe and like the bell to stay up to date for whenever those videos are released, along with the various other content that I come out with on a weekly basis. If you did like this video, don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment down below with kind of anything you have different, any questions, any problems that you're having, you know, let's build this community up. Let's try and work it all out together. That's what we're here for. But that is it for this video, like I said, and until the next one, see ya.